everyone, we're back on 80 Days. It's been a really long time, but we are in Santiago. So, uh, last we checked, we had been ditched by pirates, and we are doing something. Planning our trip, because we are mostly dead. But only mostly dead. There is no looting through pockets and looking for loose change for us. Okay, let's see. Uh, hmm. Walking the streets of Santiago meant taking one's life into one's hands. Cars zoomed around the wide streets like stampeding cattle. And the drivers appeared to aim directly at the pedestrians, not unlike New York City, by way of some sport. I took refuge from the mayhem in the rolling landscapes of O'Higgins Park, where the roads were replaced by carriage trails walked by tired horses who perhaps knew themselves destined for the knacker's yard. I enjoyed the lakes and flowers, taking in the scenery, enjoying what nature has to offer in such an urban environment. A most sedate entertainment for a young gentleman, perhaps, but a calming one after the excesses of all our traveling. Because apparently lying down on the beach for two weeks wasn't calming enough. But who cares? We have flowers. As we lay down to sleep, Monsieur Fogg murmured, Today is day 81, passport to... We have failed. It is true. It's true. This changes nothing, however, he added. We must still return home as fast as possible. New route, Machu Picchu. Panama City, which is up north. Port-au-Prince. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Hold on, hold on. Port-au-Prince, we need to go north. The newly formed Compania Sudamericana de Vapores was celebrating its inception by offering passengers places aboard one of its large cargo steamers, due to follow the coast as far as Lima. It was a huge ship, the call of its horns. You know, at this point, we've traveled in so many ways. Who cares if it's gentlemanly? Of course, I'm not the British man, so I'm the Frenchman. It was a huge ship. The call of its horn was like the song of an enormous whale. We waved the coastline away and carved into the water, smoke towers rising from the funnels. The scale of the world, its great oceans, and its mighty machines made my heart soar. I will fog. The cargo ship was, m cargo of the ship, was mostly frozen meat and fish, packed in barrels and crates and piled in a hold that was filled with pack ice. I'm curious. My master can take care of himself. We ship it in from the Antarctic, uh, Antarctic shelf. There's an icebreaker permanently stationed there to chew out blocks for us to use. Hmm. Arctic ice. I only eat January snowflakes. Have you been to the South Pole? Don't be stupid, she answered, punching me in the arm. No one's been to the South Pole any more than they've been to the North Pole. But you have been to Antarctica, I asked. When we go to restock, we all go. We had a penguin in the hold once. Skipper. We brought it out and kept it for a while. We called it Marco. I've never seen a penguin, I told her. Really? She looked me up and down and then added, You would get along, I think. It's a suit joke. She tipped her little hat to me. Good day to you, Passportu. The boat made good progress. Its engines were enormous, but so was the weight it carried. Reineko. More fog. Thank you. Your attention is most beneficial. Other passengers taking the celebratory trip were a mixed bunch. Few were dignitaries. A retired army man, a singer, a politician, for the shipping company was the pride of all Chile. Others were interesting, interested members of the public. The oldest of us was Peru's oldest woman, an honorable and venerable woman who we all loved. She claimed to be 114 years old, give or take. She had vaguely waving a hand that was a few flimsy bones inside a loose bag of skin. When you get to be so old, you can't even tell how old you are. She was a font of knowledge spanning over a century, but most of it many scores of years out of date. She remembered the handover of Chilean 
from royal to military rule, quite fondly considering the bloodshed involved, and claimed to have dated the last Incan in the country. Scandal. She went inside as the evening air grew chilly, and I quickly returned to my master, as I've already screwed him over so many times now that he might just leave me in South America. The steamer slowly turned eastward towards the shore as we headed for Lima, our great horn blaring to warn the smaller ships to stay clear. I encountered the mate again as we waited for the gangplank to be lowered. How did you find our journey, friend? she demanded. The smell of fish was very strong, I complained. Oh well, she agreed. <laughs> so it is. I mean, it's a ship. I suppose I'm used to it. I must smell of fish myself. Of course not, because that's not a bold and blatant lie. You're a charmer, she declared. A Frenchman. With that, she popped up on her toes and kissed me on the cheek. Then she leaned back, stared into my eyes with an almost puzzled look for just a moment, then disappeared from sight to resume her duties. We disembarked shortly after, grateful to be on dry land once more. And we are in Lima! And off to explore to see what wonders we can find. Such as Panama City, which is where I needed to go for my harmonica. Hopefully I can afford that trip. Off! By gyrocopter! Amazing! We found a Peruvian woman who was making the journey to Panama City in an unsteady looking gyrocopter. Still, once we had paid her a small fee to let us on board, I found she was most professional, going as far as changing into a uniform before taking the controls of the craft. Because one cannot pilot a gyrocopter if one does not wear the proper attire. You fly this route regularly? I asked, realizing I should perhaps have ascertained that before we set off. One thing I have noticed is that forward thinking is not Passepartout nor Phineas Fogg's strong suit. Thus, an airship crashed us into the ocean and we had to swim for three days to get to shore. She nodded, shouting back at the roar of the worm legs, I live for the sky! At least that's what I think she said. Shine pair of shoes, very good indeed. We soared through the air, looking down upon the vast ocean on one hand, and the endless continent stretching away on the other. I asked our pilot about routes onward, because that's really the most important thing to learn right now. And she shrugged. The fastest way out. All the spices through port au prince but getting there, that's something to own. The gyrocopter could not fly for several days at a time. In fact, it could barely manage several hours before it had to touch down and refuel. However, it did so using a large concave mirror and a piston of... Is it steam? And whatever the effect involved was, it was extremely quick and we were airborne within the hour. Highly efficient steam engine, I am all about that. Trimmed brow. Superb. We arrived rather abruptly, circling twice over Panama City before dropping, rather like a dog sitting down. Our pilot patted me on the shoulder as we disembarked. Enjoy the rest of your time in this part of the world, she declared. There is much here to be wondered at. I thanked her because that's what's polite, gosh darn it. And she waved us on our way. And here we are in Panama City. I am going to sell the harmonica. That's it. Antique map. Several hundred years old, depicting the Caribbean islands. One of those marks. I might have to buy this. Port au Prince. Off to Port au Prince. But I have an antique map. I am going to have to leave this episode here. We have made it through gyrocopter and through ship. I will see you all as we travel to Port au Prince in the next episode. Good night and good luck.